spa this weekend. This is gonna be good. This is gonna tell us a lot that we don't know. I brought up this, if this is a VCARB or Cash App or RB or Racing Bulls or whatever they're calling themselves now. This is their poster. I think it pretty much encapsulates spa in a picture. I wanna go over this part of spa because I think it's very important this weekend. But first, let's go over the weather. That's what we usually do. We'll go to Williams Racing, which has a very non-detailed. I don't think spa really matters anyway. They never know what's gonna happen. It's just like Austria. I was at Austria one of the races last year and you, I can tell you right now, they have no idea. They're just guessing. It's very much like the east coast of Canada where I live. Uh, if you want to know what it's going to be out li uh, like outside, stick your head out a window. That's pretty much the only way you're going to know if it's actually raining or not. So it's going to be rain affected spa. I know rain, rain affected weird, but like all of these numbers are super up in the air. It could be completely sunny all day, every day, uh, or it can be torrential downpour and they'll cancel the race after doing two laps. If you remember back a few years, that's what they ended up doing. Very controversial. Uh, supposed to be not super duper warm, only on the 20 degrees here and there throughout the weekend, which is about between 65 and 70 Fahrenheit. So high ch chance of precipitation on Saturday though. Uh, that looks pretty high and then a quite a bit lower on race day. But again, it was nearly zero off for all of last weekend. And we ended up being affected pretty much every day for the Hungarian Grand Prix. So sp spa should be pretty interesting. So that's the weather. Up next for Steppen, uh, looks like, and I said this last weekend, that he probably will take a penalty at some point in time. Normally it would be at spa. They've taken penalties here pretty consistently over the years since the limited the amount of ice engines that you can use. But I also suggest they might do it Japan, but because of the way they do things here this year, Japan is already done for, so it's kind of too early for that. The next one coming up will be Kota, is kind of a popular one to take pen engine penalties at. Any place that you can pass really easy is where they're gonna take penalties. And Spas looks like where he's gonna, and most people have said, it looks like this is where he's gonna take it. It's a big circuit, easy to pass, especially if you have a slippy car, which the Red Bulls are still really fast in a straight line. And it looks like he's gonna take the, the ice turbochargers and all that kind of stuff, as well as some control electronics. I don't think he's gonna take the whole thing. He's gonna start 10 places back. Now that's not the whole thing. You can take up to 20, I believe, if you take um, if you take everything, but I think now if this was last year's car, I think they would take everything because he is historically in 2022 he went from 14th to first, and Max on his own is really really good at Spa. Uh, if you've ever watched him over the years, Spa is one of the ones where he consistently does very well. I think it's a favorite track of his, and it's usually rain affected, and he's pretty good in the rain. And the Red Bull, it suits the Red Bull's style overall. We've seen the Red Bull kind of clunky over curbs uh, in the recent past. The curbs around Spa really aren't too bad. In the back half of the course, there's one that I can think of where you kind of have to go over it. It's a left-hander before you go into the slow right-hander double apex. But other than that, it's not too bad. The top of the hill is a little bit iffy, but I think the Spa is really going to be... Uh, telling for where the Red Bull sits. But first off, let's talk about <laughs> Max's sim racing. Lots of people had made jokes about this, that he was sim racing in the middle of the night at Spa, which is, I mean, I think that's pretty friggin' ironic. Uh, but apparently, now this came from Marco, so I didn't really, uh, like, that's like a 5% chance that it's actually true, that they had some talks with him and they, need, they don't want him to do that anymore. But this is stupid for me, and this might be a hot take for me, but if you guys remember back to Michael Schumacher, Michael Schumacher, his paradigm shift for being a really good driver was practice, 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 practice. There was unlimited practice that you could do back in those days, so he used to spend thousands of hours now the sims weren't as good back there but he used to spend them in sims and he used to spend them on the track practicing 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 till the early hours of the morning the race before i imagine if max was in the red bull sim practicing the spa track or even hungry at till 3 a.m in the morning the story would be a lot different the fact that he was doing it in his own personal sim rig at home, which are my, the one that I have, the sim rig that I'm sitting in right now, is probably quite a bit better than the sims from the mid to 
early 2010s. If this had been a Red Bull sim, nobody would have said a word. They would have said, oh man, he what a dedicated driver. He was in the sim till three in the morning and it wasn't even for this race, it was for next race at Spa. He was in the sim working with his engineers, making sure that he knew exactly what he wanted for the car. That's how dedicated he is. But because he's playing a game, to some people, this means like Crofty, <laughs> Crofty. This means that somehow this is different, and it's not. I think it's stupid. And if they're actually talking to him about not racing while he's racing, there's so much worse things. I said this to my wife. There's so much worse things he could be getting into. Like Kimmy used to get drunk like the day before his races, <laughs> and back in the 60s and 70s, man, they were doing all kinds of stuff that they shouldn't have been doing. And this guy is just a dedicated race car driver, no matter what the day and what the car is. So there's a lot of people saying and a lot of argument over whether the Red Bull has gotten slower. The comparison from 2023 to 2024 is a difficult one. It seems from results that the Red Bull is not performing as well. And I think it's probably because we can't really tell if everybody's gotten faster and the Red Bull has stand still or if the Red Bull might have gone backwards a little bit. But because it's not apples to apples comparison, it's really hard to say from last year to this year. Japan was in a different spot. The track conditions are totally different in the calendar. Canada was wet. A lot of Arab countries that they start off with are, are weird because just like one sandstorm and you lose grip and those things are not necessarily something you can rely on. Silverstone was wet, Hungary was wet-ish, uh, there's a lot of other things like they're obviously not ahead when it comes to qualifying trim as well so they end up being in the middle of the pack and it's really hard to tell when you're in dirty air, their strategies haven't been that good. There's lots of, of things that are going to make this different but I think Spa is going to be the one where we know. This is the one we'll know. Now let's go over Hungary because that's the one they were just at. And I, I, wanna, I want you to take a look at the Q3 time. This is 2023, the Q3 time. He spent no time other than in first, and he finished quite a bit ahead. And I don't believe he started on pole. It w wasn't him on pole. It was Carlos, I believe. Grid position first. No, yeah, grid second. Yeah, so he started in second place. So he came from second and finished first. And if you look at these times in Hungary, he starts off pumps in a 127 right off the bat on cold tires. Now, again, this is not sussing down tires or anything like that, but let's just look at the times that we see. Early high fuel, 25s, 24s. After his pit stop, 23s, 23s. Little bit of tire graining, 24, 23s. After his next pit stop, 20s. There's one, a, a 120.8. That's, he's probably trying to undercut somebody or trying to fend an undercut there. But you can say he settles into 22s, then he gets 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 121s. This is 2023, and from what we've seen, most of the cars are faster. So that was a 16 for his Q3 time, a 115.2, which is like over a second faster in one lap pace. And that got him one lap faster, and that got him almost exactly the same pole position like uh, he wasn't really that far off so in Hungary he started third when the year before he started second if he had to put in that pole time no if he had to put the other pole time for 2023 here he would have started in the teens down where Sergio Perez was that's how much everybody has advanced so it's probably a case of both but let's take a look at what we have here so boom puts in a 128 last year 127 settles into 124s 123, 124 after his first pit stop. 122, you don't see that undercutting stuff that happened. Even though he was fighting people for position, that didn't happen. 122, 123, 125s, this is where it was a little bit rainy and he was in some slower air behind Hamilton. 125, 123, his next pit stop, same thing. Trying to undercut people and fight them off, he puts in 120.9, whereas the other one, when he did that after his last pit stop, or was 120.4. And this car, as already seen from Q3, is over a second faster than the 23 car. Yet in his undercut, can't do it. Now again, the track is not necessarily the same conditions, but still. We get one, 121, two, 
121s, that's it. I mean, he has his incident with Hamilton, I believe is here-ish, uh, but still, that's two 121s versus his six, seven, or eight, or whatever it was for 2023. So overall, his average lap time was worse. Now, the car over one lap pace obviously is faster, but I think Spa is gonna be a good a good teller of this. So this is Spa, this is coming up to uh, Radion and Eau Rouge. So what what Spa really does here is the lead up of this corner is a, is a very slow right-hander and into this section here. So the slow right-hander is slow speed corner into this straight, which is all about acceleration. Up through here is high down force and how planted your car is. You're gonna have to hit these curbs. Now these curbs are very slight, very, very slight, but we've seen in the past that Red Bull can't go over curbs. That's why a lot of their pace has gone down by quite a bit. And this moves into another straight and then in, into a chicane where you have to brake really, really hard. And that's the biggest part you can pass here. If this Red Bull isn't locked in in this whole section here, if this isn't perfect from what we saw from last year, something has happened to that Red Bull. I fully expect that they will have the big shotgun things back on their, uh, on Max's car because that was a high downforce circuit specific spec. They will most likely have a lot of the opposite on here, low downforce. I mean, you still have to have quite a bit. Spa is, it's a big track, it's seven kilometers, and there's a lot going on through the rest of the course. But if the Red Bull isn't fast in these straights, like if we're not seeing those maximum speeds versus the rest of the cars at least equal, if the Ferrari has passed them, as far as speed goes, I don't, I don't know what to tell you because it, it, it will have been standing still and everybody's improved. Uh, so the, watch out this weekend for this. If, if you're going to watch anything on the practice days, check out this part. Now, again, rain affected, so I think Red Bull will probably pray for the rain because it will equalize everything, and Max is quite good in the rain, whereas some of his McLaren compatriots are not necessarily that good. Okay, so that's a lot of the track stuff done, what we expect for the weekend. Uh, for this preview, let's go over some of the other stuff. So Pinoto, he seems like a nice guy and all, but he's just kind of a doughhead as far as I'm concerned, as far as the team manager goes. He, I don't think he really did that well at Ferrari. I could be wrong, could be a, a bad uh, take, but he's coming back with Audi. Uh, I don't think it's as, as a team principal role. It says it's a team principal role, but I, I think they're going to section off their team dynamic a little bit different. We've seen this from McLaren and then from Alpine, that they organize their team wall a little bit different. Um, and I'm not 100% sure that he will be in that full role. He might be. I mean, he's obviously done it before and he has the experience. He's an amazing engineer. Before he became 10 principal, he was with Ferrari forever. Since the Schumacher days, I believe, with the stupid, he's not wearing his round glasses in this, but with the little round glasses, there's pictures of Michael Schumacher in a Ferrari with Bonato in the background with the clipboard and stuff like that. He's a great engineer and he proved himself years doing that. I don't particularly remember him, but I mean, all the, the wall that are, of clowns that are up there. So the biggest thing though for me is that Seidel, Seidel is out. I mean, and he left McLaren for this. Most of the paddock, including Oda Motor and Sport, is mostly saying that there was some not so good feelings in the team between the management of Audi because they have pushed forward their ownership of the Sauber kick, whatever the heck it is, the Sauber group. Uh, so they're hundred percent owning this year, despite not having changed over to Audi just yet. So uh, it's either at the end of this year or they've already taken up the stake of it. So they were originally going to do 25, 50, 75, and then 100 in 2026, but they've moved up that scheduling and and because Sauber is doing worse than they were last year, uh, it's really not looking that good. But the main thing that I think it's going on, and there's a, quite a few, few people reporting this, is that Seidel is really good at building a team up and maybe not so good at running it. And that's why Sauber has kind of gone backwards. And maybe that buildup of the team is, is almost done. 
The one thing with Audi is that their their engine department is completely different to the actual team. So there was a disagreement between Hoffman and Seidel. So there's a disagreement between both of them and it looks like there's a power struggle in behind. But what Audi did is that they axed both of them. So they're no both of them are no longer there anymore and they're going to go with Bonotto and I and this is the other thing there's rumors that my crack might move alongside Bonotto there because I don't, again, I don't think that dynamic that they're hoping to have at Audi is full Bonotto. I think there's, they'll, they'll share the design and direction of the team. I would think that Bonotto would be a little bit more behind the scenes engineering wise because again, he's a really good engineer, just maybe not figurehead kind of stuff. Um, the good thing is they're they're at a pretty prolific team, so and they've already got Castrol as one of their um, as one of their sponsors. So I don't think they'll really need a Zach Brown kind of guy because Zach Brown is not necessarily from that background. He's more of a mogul of advertising, and he's done wonders for that team. And I, I think Benato will be in the background, not necessarily at advertising, because again, it's it's a pretty prolific team. I think they'll be more like Ferrari, where you don't really have to worry about it could have like an all black car and it would probably just be fine with no sponsors on it but that's pretty interesting james key remained technical director which i think is very important as far as that goes but it's just interesting that it's a total shakeup. necessarily very good for audi you could you could say that from two points of view one audi is recognized that things aren't going well the uh, like a year and a half year and a bit before they do to enter the sport and they're proactively trying to fix that before their absolute arrival in 2026 or you can say the fact that they're having to do this at all means that they've made a poor decision to start with and they're on the road to having a austin martin entrance into the sport where you have so many years or maybe mclaren and honda meeting up again having so many years of pain before you get to a place that's really good we don't know it'll ultimately depend on how heavy of uh engine formula this is going to be or if it's going to be aerodynamics aerodynamics you don't really know uh until the year if it's a if it's an engine kind of formula hmm, audi is usually pretty good at that sort of thing and again I think personally that it's going to be a fuel war. You'll see a lot of that with the biofuels that they're entering in. And I think it's going to be more like top dragster kind of stuff where you really have to have your fuel right or you're not going to get the same amount of horsepower. You'll see a lot of like stuff that you see from Alpine this year where they're heavy and overweight and slow because of their actual. So Alpine is bringing this amazing livery. They're ditching now. A lot of people have said this. They said this looks a lot like um, a, a monster. Now, if monster entered the sport other than sponsoring Lewis Hamilton's helmet and stuff like that, um, that would be amazing. But it's not. It's the claws. It's it's Deadpool v Wolverine movie livery. And I think it looks amazing. You see that Castro logo on there. Um, I think it looks amazing. It looks really, really good. It doesn't help that I hated their pink livery. Pink livery in the past, great, but because they don't, they're pathologically afraid of using paint these days because they'll lose 0 .0001 of a millisecond of time because the paint weighs a little bit heavier. These guys didn't even go out in Q1 to set a, a real time. I think you got more problems than your friggin' paint. But that being said, this looks really good because the the heavy, the very dark red and cut cuts in here. That's really cool. The all those streaks and stuff. And I thought this was pretty interesting. Gasly will be no O'Connor Gasly uh, one-off overalls. O'Connor will be in the red Deadpool mask themed helmet planned, and Gasly will be in the racing yellow with black Wolverine designs. So that's super cool <laughs> it's illegal in f1 to run two different cars in two different colors they have to be the same livery aside from the t-cam some minor stuff around the halo but aside from that those two things and they're obviously their helmet you're not allowed to run two different uh, liveries they have to be the same unlike f2 and f3 which all the cars are all different colors and i can never tell what they are i suppose that's probably why they don't do it so you get some good messaging across and what teams are but i think this will look pretty cool with the two different things great for them to do that i'd wish they'd concentrate a lot heavier on their 
performance because a few races ago they actually looked pretty good before they started letting down on strategy and uh, having Gasly's car blow up every other weekend. Uh, they looked like they were performing a little bit more. They were seeing the top 10 more than usual. Uh, almost reaching Formula A at some points. FIA to trial fitting air conditioning systems into F1 cars. Now, this is the conspiracy theory. Normally I wouldn't talk about this and I don't, I don't, I don't care. They're not going to do this because it's too heavy. It's just stupid. It's just another fail point. AC in the car is fairly dangerous as well. Uh, the way that AC compressors work, it's a, it's a big heavy piece of thing that you don't want in a car difficult to integrate into the car like an AC compressor in a regular car is just bolted on right and then you run a belt to it and that's what compresses the AC and sends it all around the car you can't just bolt a big heavy thing onto an F1 car because it'll just fly off as soon as you get in an accident and an AC compressor is pretty heavy not like super heavy but like fairly heavy enough so it had to be integrated into the car this is this will never ever work if, if this goes through I'll be I'll be in uh, I won't believe it, but like my conspiracy theory head goes to the Qatar Grand Prix following controversial extreme heat and Hungaro Ring was also quite hot. There's often heat waves in Europe now. Whether you think global warming is a thing or not, it's definitely a lot hotter than it used to be. Uh, but you see Qatar come up here. I think uh, they do a lot of the racing in uh, Las Vegas, they did it at night because it's just too hot during the day. Like, look at these guys. I think they're doing this because they're going to try to keep going to Southeast Asian Arab countries that will pay them a billion gazillion dollars in advertising money and other kind of money for them to show up there, like Qatar. The only reason Qatar is on the like there's no Qatar racing fans. I'm sure there are like now and I sure there are, but it's not like it's not like it's a heritage of Qatar. Like they didn't have it's not like England where they had World War Two, tons of World War Two uh, airfields left over and turned 99 percent of them into racing circuits. And that's kind of where they got their racing heritage after World War Two. Qatar as a country it didn't have that. I mean, until they found oil in a lot of those countries, they weren't really much other than deserts. So there's not a lot of super duper, there is long history there, but not like modern history to do with racing cars. So the only reason they're going there is for the money, right? They're there for oil money. Um, and that's my head is that, oh, well, we're gonna start, maybe we'll have three Qatar races and four in Bahrain, one in Kuwait, and then one in Bahrain, and all this kind of, and, and then six more in the UAE. And I, I think that's what they're, I mean, I'm being a bit cheeky when I say all this. And this is Hamilton's plan to add air conditioning in the cars is rubbish. I can't remember, it's not needed. This is Formula One, it's always been like this. It's tough conditions and we're highly paid athletes. Yeah, you gotta train your ass off to make sure you can stand the heat ultimately, and it's tough. It's not easy, especially when you go to places like Qatar and Singapore. Oh, Singapore, that's the other place that's really hot. I think Singapore is the worst because it's the humidity too. It's like 90% humidity there. Anyway, that's it. So hopefully you guys will enjoy this weekend. I'm gonna go over possibly practice if something crazy happens, definitely qualifying and definitely the race on Sunday. Enjoy your race weekend, and I will see you guys then.